What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about Lucius Luke Jackson. Now, he was born October 31st, 1941, in San Marcos, Texas. Although he would go to high school in Morehouse, uh, Louisiana, but he would attend college actually at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. That's what it's called now. But back then it was called Pan American College. And actually, an interesting fact, he was a member of the U.S. Olympic basketball team that won the gold medal at the 1964 Olympics. And it was a pretty good team. Uh, some of his notable teammates, he played with uh, Bill Bradley on that team. Mel, Mel Counts was on that team. Uh, Walt Hazard was on that team. Yeah, some notable guys, and uh, he was drafted by the Sixers in the fourth, uh, with the fourth overall pick in the nineteen sixty four NBA draft. Now, coming out of the gate, he came out pretty strong. He put up fourteen point eight points per game, twelve point nine rebounds per game, just in his rookie season, and he made an All Star appearance. However, that'd be his only All-Star appearance. Because uh, the following season, 65-66, his minutes would definitely be diminished because the addition of Wilt Chamberlain. Um, you know, prior to that, the season before, Wilt Chamberlain would only play 35 games with them at the trade deadline. But this was their first full season together. And Wilt took a lot of the touches, you know, from the ball. Uh, Luke's Jackson's numbers would dip. But that doesn't mean that he was any less of a player during this time. It's just he was, you know, scoring less. He put up 8 points and 8 rebounds. Uh, 66-67, their team would win the NBA Finals. This is probably one of the best teams of the first 25 years of the NBA, the 1967-76ers. They went 68-13, and which was a then record. Uh, they defeated the Boston Celtics, becoming the first team in the 1960s to defeat the Celtics. And... It'd be Will Chamberlain's first title, and it was a good team. They had Hal Greer, Chet Walker, Billy Cunningham, obviously Luke Jackson. But what was so scary about uh, this Sixers team is their presence down low. Because Will Chamberlain said Luke Jackson was the second strongest player in the league after him. So... You had not only Wilt Chamberlain down low with his incredible strength, but you had Luke Jackson. You know, they were quite a duo. And they couldn't run it back in 68. He'd put up 11 points and 10 rebounds. They'd blow a 3 1 lead to the Celtics. And 68 69, they, Wilt Chamberlain would go to the Lakers. So he was no longer on the team, but it, the team was still good enough to be a playoff contender. They went 55-27, and 27. and Luke's numbers, he'd put up 14-11. and 11. You'd see his numbers going back up, and you'd see other guys on the team's numbers going up, like Billy Cunningham putting up 24, Hal Greer putting up 23, because now that Wilt has gotten, other people got to start stepping up. And the thing about Luke Jackson was he was a tenacious rebounder. Uh, you know, in this era of centers, right, big men, you know, he stood out. You know, he's a six foot nine power forward. And, you know, he was cleaning the glass every night. Yeah, uh, his his highest rebound per game came in sixty four sixty five, where he put up twelve point nine rebounds per game, finishing eighth in the league. 
And I want to mention, too, he's the 1965 Rookie of the Year. So, Sporting Rookie of the Year, not the official NBA Rookie of the Year. And I don't think that award exists anymore. <laughs> Maybe people are confused. There's an official NBA Rookie of the Year. But there's also a NBA Sporting News Rookie of the Year. I don't know. It's confusing. I don't get it either. But it was like a it was like a press Rookie of the Year, and he I believe he deserved Rookie of the Year in my opinion. Uh, he was a great inside defender. For example, in the sixty seven sixty eight season, he he finished seventh in defensive win shares, and. I wish I could say that he could have led the Sixers into the 70s. However, in the 68-69 season, he suffered a horrible knee injury. You know, and this would pretty much ruin his career. He had all these knee surgeries. And... He was never the same after that. He After... After 1969, he missed a total of 66 games in the last three years of his career. He would only play. He'd only play 37 games in 69-70. So, you know, and then you'd see his athleticism dip, which affected his numbers. Like, to give you an example, in 69-70, he put up five points and five rebounds. And he would retire in the 71-72 season at just the age of 30, just because of his knees hurting so bad. And in my opinion, he's probably one of the most forgotten power forwards of all time. And I think sometimes if you look at these players' numbers... Maybe you, maybe some people will say, oh, big deal, he didn't do much. But the thing is, um, playing on as good of a team as he did as the 67-76ers, his numbers weren't the same because, you know, there's a lot of other people scoring the ball. You had to really watch the guy play to understand how good he was. And... And uh, to give you an interesting fact, <laughs> and I didn't know this until I researched him, you know, a little more. There's actually a band, an all-female rock band, that named their band after him. They named him Lucius Jackson, and it's like a rock, it's like a rap rock band. And to me, that's interesting. His, uh, <laughs> you know, how many bands would name themselves? This is any kind of a shot at Lucius Jackson. How many bands would name themselves after uh, a former all-star player that's not, you know, to the level of being a household name? Like, if you named your band Kobe Bryant, everybody's going to get it. Uh, but imagine naming your team, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of another player, Dewan Wagner or... <laughs> You know, a what-if player. Hey, but this isn't any kind of a shot at Lucius Jackson. He was a great player. And I've heard stories about his strength. Uh, one story I heard when I was researching him, I think it was the 67 season, he broke a backboard. And he's one of the only players to ever do that. I think the other ones being Shaq, Wilt, and somebody want to correct me down below if uh, there's another player who did. I'm I'm sure I can't remember off the top of my head another player who did, but that's Luke Jackson's story. Uh, forgotten power forward, you know, great inside presence. His career was ruined by knee injuries, and him and Wilt Chamberlain were. Like, I consider a Twin Towers duo. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching.